Air pollution is certainly not good for us. The EPA has designated six air pollutants in a science-based criteria, established guidelines for measuring them and trying to curtail them. Five out of the six um, air pollutants are gases, and the sixth is uh, particulate matter. Probably one of the most well-known gases is ozone. Ozone is what we think of when we, when we hear the term a heat wave. It's because the sunlight impacts the ozone and increases the levels in the atmosphere and close to the ground, which is where children play. If you want to know what your ozone levels are in your community, you, there are orange codes and there's a red code. You can look it up on a website. The um, EPA does publish that on a daily basis and you probably can find it in your weather forecast. It's important to know if there's a high ozone alert day that you should keep your children indoors during the center part of the day, the hot, hot part of the day. Let them go outside before the morning rush, before the ozone levels have increased, and at the end of the day after the evening rush when things have quieted down a bit. There are many vulnerable populations to air pollution and to ozone and particulate matter in particular. For ozone, we like to think of young children and the very old, or the two high vulnerable populations. But in addition, young children with asthma or young children with poorly controlled asthma who had a recent upper respiratory infection are also more likely to get an exacerbation from ozone than from someone who does not have asthma. Elderly people who have any chronic lung disease, such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, are also much more vulnerable. How do we know this? Because on days with high ozone, like a heat wave, we have more emergency room visits, we have more hospitalizations, and we have an increased mortality rate. And this happens year after year after year, so finally we've made the correlations. So it's something we should look out for.